Hey guys, this is Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? Please like and share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. If you get anything from my work, an epiphany, a connect the dot, a new book to read, a new author to explore, please consider supporting my work. I know the links will be in the drop box below. Hi everybody, it snowed today. Oh, and I'm hurting. As always, that doesn't quit. A wasp bay. We're going to take off on Book of God's Word, Chapter 20. And then I'll go on to the Awaspe part. Are you ready? And yes, things are crazy here, as always. What's not crazy? Um, trying to get my body ready to paint the rest of down here and upstairs. I have a little section to paint and then touch up some spots. And then I can go again tackle the storage unit when it stops raining or snowing because again they place me in a muddy part and I love tracking mud into my house not anywho chapter 20 because of the destruction at T's Gao there were hundreds of thousands of people rendered homeless and destitute, and groups were surging about in all phases, places, crying out for food or for some needful thing. Ihuna Mazda said to Zarathustra, the all pure, the ill fortune of mortals is good fortune of the righteous gods, but the good fortune of mortals is glory of the evil gods. Think not that because Tizgao is burned, and the people hungry, the voice of the father is out of place. Now is the time where they give ear. By the loss of earthly treasures, the soul seeketh for that which will endure forever. Go thou, therefore, O Zarathustra, and I will go with thee. And criers shall be sent out, calling the people to the valley of Tizoka, Tizokia. That's not that night. So it came about. When night set in, Zarathustra came before the people, and there were tens of thousands of them. Ihuna Mazda spake to them, explaining the Orismanian law. When he was done speaking, he took Hittisius, the king's widow, her children, and forty others, and made a crescent of them, and he stood betwixt the horns thereof. And to his left and right were many of his companions. Thus prepared Zarathustra sang a song such as the Ihins had taught him in his youth. And the Jujas were ushered into the crescent, taking on Sigris, the king amongst the number. And the spirit of the king was softened, for they sang peace to his soul and joy forever. And presently he awoke from his craziness and remembered he was dead. And he rejoiced in Zarathustra and applauded him before all the people. And likewise, the spirits of darkness who were with him did in the same manner. Zarathustra said, Behold, I have not come in a dark age. You shall not worship any man born of woman, nor call him sacred. One only who is Arzman, the creator, is master over all the world. Hear he now my voice unto him. Zarathustra stretched his arms upward, full of energy, and Ihuna Mazda speak through him, saying, Light of light, O Father, hear thou thy son. With the almighty hand, bless thou this faithful sufferers. Hardly had these words been spoken, when there fell from the air above fish and fruit and grains and roots, and all things good to eat, more than sufficient to feed the famished people, for three days, and there were more than 30,000 of them. And all this while the Sagris of the king looked on and beheld 
what had been done, and he cried out with a loud voice, Blessed art thou, Orismond, oh, that I had known thee, oh, that I had sought to find thee. Hittidius, my wife, sorry, I keep pronouncing that wrong, and my blessed babes, swear ye to the king, he will proclaim the Ihuna Mazian law forever. Swear it, give me joy, swear, swear, swear. Then hit it, hit, hit hit us. And the children held up their hands as directed by Ahuna Mazda, swearing a solemn oath to maintain the love of Marzman and the Zarathustrian law forever. After these, there came thousands and thousands of others who look, who also swore in the same way. Ahuna Mazda then took away the Sargris and the spirits could not be seen by mortals. Chapter 21. On the next day, Zarathustra appeared before the multitude, and Ihuna Mazda spake through him, saying, I came not in an age of darkness, but of light and knowledge. I am not here to proclaim miracles. I serve the Father, whose Son I am. In heaven above, there are two kinds of spirits, those who serve the earth and those who serve the Father. If ye serve the earth, ye shall be ministered unto by the spirits of the lower heavens, who are bound to the earth. If ye serve the Father, ye are ministered unto by the spirits of the higher heavens. Because ye were united in prayer last night to the Father, his holy angels brought ye food. His harvests are over all the earth. His fields are broad. It is not just that he also gather in and bring it to you. To be just to him, Go ye and bring forth out the fat earth, where with all the need rejoicing in him. Cease warring, kill not anything he created alive, that runs on the ground or flies in the air, and no flesh save fish, which is without blood, and is cold in life, shall enter your mouths. In the morning when ye first awake, pray to the creator, Arzman, Praying after this manner, glory be to thee, thou all light, because thou hast created me alive. I will strive with all my might to be upright before thee. I have faith thou createst me wisely, and I know thou wilt show me the way. Make my eyes sharper to see into my own soul, that into all else in the world I will discover its dark spots and wash them clean. Seal thou up my eyes from the sins of others, but magnify their goodness unto me, that I may be ashamed of my unworthiness before thee. This day I will run quickly to the distressed and helpless, and give them joy by some deed or word. Seal up my tongue against slandering any man or woman or child, for they are thy creation in thy own handiwork. What thou feedest me with sufficient is it for the day thereof. Complaint shall not escape from my mouth. Quicken me all day, O Orisman, with this my prayer that I may become a glory in thy works. Amen. I heard Amazda said, touching prayer, remember that to utter words, but to practice not, is of little value. He that is true to his own light is strong in soul. To be false to one's own light is to put out the eyes and stop up the ears. He that would rise in heaven, let him begin to rise on earth. The resurrection lieth in following the all highest light one already hath. He that doth not this is a fool to ask the father to raise him up. Hellfire is his boundary in the next world. Because Orisman sacrificed himself, he created all things. By sacrifice contributing for the elevation of others, doth a man begin at the beginning of approaching Orisman. This is resurrection, in fact. Ahuna Mazda called together those who swore allegiance to Zarathustrian law, and he separated them from the others. And there were in 10 days 30,000 professed followers. Nevertheless, Ihuna Mazda spake to Zarathustra, saying, Of all these, only one in 10 will remain long in faith. And to establish the 10th firmly is more valuable than to have 10 times as many. 
who understand not what they profess. Zarathustra asks, how can a tenth be made firm? Ihuna Mazda, long ago I told thee to go and live with the Ihins. Zarathustra said, I understand. I learned the wheel of Arzman from the Ihins. Then said Ihuna Mazda, make thou a wheel of Arzman. Zarathustra made a wheel and hung it slanting, facing the sun at high noon. Then Ihuna Mazda explained to the people, saying, this is a symbol of the name of the creator, Orzman, the all light master. Put it in the place betwixt the horns of the crescent. For it is sacred. It is the sign of the altar. It is, the, it is called the altar. Let the faithless go with me and I will explain. Satanism. Sorry, guys. I know a lot of you actually follow this book, but really understand what that symbolism is. They carried it to the meeting place and faced it in the same direction. And when the people stood in a circle around it, Ihuna Mazda said, the name of this place shall be Herald, and the name of the wheel shall be Altar. Behold thee, then ye have already sworn an oath unto the thigh in the custom of your forefathers, but ye shall now renew your oath on the altar of Orzman in his holy book. Ihuna Mazda then administered the oath unto many wherein they covenanted to turn from evil and strive to good. And each and every one turned the wheel once round as witness before the father. When they had all covenanted, Ihuna Mazda said, ye shall make many wheels and carry them along the roadways. And wherever one road crosseth, another ye shall fix an altar and ye shall dedicate the wheel to the creator. Feels like there's another page there. And whosoever passed that way afterward shall halt and remember his creator, and he shall renew his covenant to turn from evil and strife to do good in testimony before the Father. He shall turn the wheel once around. Thus was established the sacred wheel of Zarathustra amongst the Ihuan race. Ihuna Mazda spake to Zarathustra, saying, what is the most potent thing? Zarathustra said, the eye is the most potent. The eye is most to be feared. The most desirable. The eye of man can go away from man. His hand cannot go away from him, nor his foot. Man's eye can go up to the mountains, to the clouds, to the moon, to the sun, and stars. And who Namazda said, if the eye of man is his most potent instrument. What then? Zarathustra said. The eye of Horizmon is his most potent power over man. So Zarathustra made a picture of an eye and placed it over the altar. Whereupon Ahuna Mazda made the people covenant anew, but this time to the Ahuna Mazian law, the Ormazian law, wherein they said, I know thy eye is upon me night and day. Nothing is hidden from thy sight, O Orzman. Lord of the Rings. And Ihuna Mazda commanded them to place a picture of an eye over the altars and the places of worship. We're not talking about the evil eye either. Then came the first night of the new moon. And Zarathustra went into the place of worship, and a great multitude came in. So Ihuna Mazda said, This is mass, night for the star spirits of the dead, that the widow he teed us may have joy this night. I will sing and pray for the spirit of the king, and afterward for all spirits who are in darkness. When they sang and prayed, the spirit of the king came in Sargris and talked to Titus and to others, and after that the spirit of the king prayed and sang with Ihuna Mazda. 
Thus was established the first night of the new moon as moon's night mass for the spirits of the dead and was demonstrated before the living. Ahuna Mazda taught through Zarathustra for 40 days and nights teaching the Zarathustrian law and the Ormazian law, and thousands and thousands of people were coveted unto righteousness, and these were called his disciples of Zarathustra. Zarathustra inquired of Ahuna Mazda what was the best, most potent thing for the generations of men. Then answered Ahuna Mazda, saying, the best, most potent thing for the generations of men is to teach the very young child the ever presence of an all potent eye which sees into the body of mortals, into the behavior of mortals, into the soul. Zarathustra inquired concerning very young children. Then Ahunamasa answered, saying, In three days and five days and seven days, the rite of circumcision for the males and piercing the ears for the females, and when they are old enough, they shall be consecrated on the wheel. Zarathustra said to consecrate what is that? Then answered Ahuna Mazda to profess the all highest, the creator Osman. And from that time forth, the young child shall pray to Osman every night before going to sleep. And pray every morning as soon as awake to Osman, renewing its covenant and acknowledging the presence of the all potent eye. So our thruster inquired concerning children who were not thus provided. And when Mazda answered, saying, such children may live or they may die. If they die, they fall into the care of Drujas and become Drujas themselves. But if they live, they grow up liars and drooks, killing and stealing. Zara Thruster inquired concerning a consecrated child if it die. Then Ahuna Mazda answered, if a consecrated child die, its soul is received in heaven by the consecrated spirits of Orzman. It is then taken to a place of all good, a place of delight. When these things were explained to the disciples, the mothers brought their children before Zarathustra and Ihuna Mazda consecrated them on the altar, and they were baptized with water and fire and given names by the rabbi. Sorry, this is extremely occult. Chapter 23. Zarathustra, the old pure, inquired concerning protecting protection against imposters. To which Ahuna Mazda answered, saying, Prove all things on the altar. If a man come before the people, saying, Behold, I am a prophet, and he teach strange doctrines, he shall be tied on the wheel with his face toward the sun at high noon. And if he be a true prophet, the spirits who dwell by the altar will set him free. But if he be not released on the third night, the wheel shall be carried out into the forest and stood up by the bushes. And if he be an imposter, the wild beast will come and devour his flesh. So our thruster inquired concerning the wheel afterward. Ihuna Mazda said, when an imposter hath perished on the wheel, behold, the wheel shall be no longer used as before. But the disciples shall cut away the rim of the wheel and cast it away for its useless. But the crossbars of the center of the wheel shall be retained, for it was on the bars that he was bound, and the cross of the bars is sac sacred, and it shall be hung in the place of worship for it's a true cross. Chapter 24. Zarathustra inquired concerning the government, to which Ihuna Mazda replied, saying, To the all pure disciples there is no need of government, save to do the will of Orzman, but no people are all pure, no people are, are all wise. Two kinds of governments created the, the creator. The first is his own, the government of Orzman. The second is the government mortals have amongst themselves. So Arthur inquired if the government did not abridge liberty. Ahuna Mazda said, the Armazian government giveth liberty, 
so far as man's government partaketh after the Osmanian government, if giveth liberty also. <clears throat> Zarathustra inquired, what is the best, most potent man's government? To which Ahunamaza replied, this is the best, most potent man's government. First, there shall not be more than 2,000 people, so that they can know one another, and no city shall be larger than that. The oldest, wisest, best man shall be the high rabbi, but the families of tens and families of hundreds within the city shall have one rabbi, being the oldest, wisest, best man. These rabbis shall be the government of the city. They shall have a government house, and it shall be the place of decrees. Zarathustra said, How shall they meet decrees that the decrees pervert not liberty? Ahunamaza said, Ask not this, O man. He who crieth not constantly for his liberty is a selfish man. He is a druk. Save a man, he is willing to sacrifice his liberty somewhat for the public good. He is unworthy of before our Osman to find the amount of sacrifice. This is the business of the decrees. What just happened in society? People sacrifice their liberties because, oh my God, you're going to kill me. He didn't do this. You're going to kill me because you... You don't take it. <coughs> You're not taking care of yourself. Oh my God, I'm 500 pounds. No, no offense to anybody overweight. My parents were. And I would have kicked them in the ass if they said to me, I didn't do this because I'm allergic, FYI, that I, I would have been killing them. No, you're killing yourself by eating yourselves to death. And that's a choice that you make. It's free will. No judgment. But I'm not killing you. Do you see how that fits in right there? That's Satan. Sorry to everybody who follows this book, but really understand what this is talking about. Sacrifices. Does upstairs creator really sacrifice? What did Yeshua preach? The right one? The one that was preaching the law of one? Forgive. Everybody's on an equal playing field. It don't matter what faith you follow I'm sorry just Zarathustra said how then shall the rabba proceed Ahunamaza said when they are seated the chief rabba should announce the subject, neither shall any other rabbi announce the subject. But if a rabbi have a subject, he shall state it beforehand to the chief rabbi. After the subject is announced, then shall all the rabbis speak on the subject, but they shall not speak against one another, each one declaring his highest light. When they have all spoken, then shall the chief rabbi speak his highest light, which he gathered from the others in the first place, but which is afterward illuminated by the light of Orzmond, and there shall be decree. So Zarathustra inquired concerning the laws betwixt cities, and who Namaz to speak to Zarathustra, the all pure, explaining the Orzmanian law. He said, a city is a family of one. A small village is a family of one. For which reason is a city called Ur? And every city shall have one God, Ur, who shall be the oldest, best, wisest men. The God Urs shall meet in council to consider what is good for all the cities jointly. For some cities are situated for flax and wool, some for iron and some for copper and some for ships. Zarathustra so inquired concerning the counsel of the god Urs. And when Amaza answered him, saying, The god Urs shall choose the oldest, best wise man amongst them, 
and he shall be called the God Ur chief. And he shall sit in the east in the council chamber, and he shall present the subjects after they have been told to him by the other God Urs. And when he hath presented a subject, all the members shall speak upon it. And after they have all spoken, then the God Ur chief shall speak, and his words shall be decree, which shall be called the Zarathustrian law, because the all light dwelleth with the chief, and he cannot err. This is the Osmanian law, the Ihunamazian law, and the Zarathustrian law. Zarathustra said, of a walled city, Gair, what is an Osmanian law? As Ihunamazia answered, saying to the Ihins, walled cities to the Ihuns, cities without walls, to the cities of the Druk walls. This is the kingdom of Ihuna Mazdas. They shall have faith. They shall, they, why shall they build walls? They shall not hoard up gold and silver. None will rob them. After Zarathustra, two people will live. One shall be the people of his world. The other shall be the people of Orisman. The former shall strive for earthly things. The latter for spiritual things. And there shall be no affinity betwixt these two people. From this time forth, the Zarathustrian people who have faith in the Father shall not have walled cities, save the Ihins, the sacred people. But this world's people, having no faith in the Father, shall have faith in stone walls, whereby ye may know which are righteous in my sight. Zarathustra inquired concerning the small cities, Ihuna Mazda answered him, saying, The smallest city is a man and his wife and child. And even as the people in a large city are one with one another, so shall a man and his wife and child be one with it, one another. And as a large city must have a head father, so shall a small one. Whoever so hath no head is nothing. Zarathustra said, In the government of a large city, the fathers speak on a subject, and after them the head father decreeth. Ihuna Mazda said, even so shall it be in a family of husband and wife. The wife shall speak first and the children next, if old enough. And after the father shall decree that which is good law for a large city is good for a small one. As the kingdoms in heaven are governed, so shall be the kingdom of earth. So our thruster inquired concerning a bad husband and a good wife and a bad wife, and a good husband. And when Amaz spake to Zarathustra, the old pure, saying, Who knoweth what is good and what is bad? Are not all men to give themselves as sacrifice to the father and all women also? If a good woman is not willing to sacrifice herself to a bad husband, after having sworn to Orzman, then she is not good, but a lover of herself. A good woman hath no self to serve. Because her husband turneth out bad, shall she also. Is it not good for her in the place or his man provided? Shall she set up her judgment against the fathers? Then be man of evil and passion who abuse their wives. Know with not every damsel this. For this reason, if she committed herself to her husband in the name of the father, her heareth her, he established his kingdom in her house, and that man and the woman have no longer themselves to consult as to their desires. For if the father desireth her to leave her husband, or the husband to leave the wife, he taketh one of them to heaven. Think not that he changeth as the wind, or bloweth himself to please the caprice of man or woman, rather let the good wife with the bad husband say to Orzman, because I was vain, thou hast rebuked me, O father, because I sought to change my condition, thou hast shown me I knew not what was good for me. Yet thou hast shown me the folly of my judgment before thee, and I will profit in turning thy will. I will not more open my mouth to complaint, Thou I be scourged with stripes and made ashamed of my household, yet will I glorify thee. The house, the city thou hast found within me, will I begin at the foundation and build up as a holy city in thy name. And she shall say to her husband who beateth her, 
Because the Father gave thee to me, I will rejoice and sing in thy praise. Before I sleep at night, I will ask his blessings upon thee, and in the early morning and at high noon. Thou hast mayest hate me, yet will I do great good works for thee. Thou shalt love me, thou shalt mayest kill me, yet will I go into heaven and build a house for thee. I can't believe I'm reading these words. Chapter 25. Zarathustra, the pure, divided the people leading his followers away from the others, taking them into good places of delight. After that, he took back with compassion and he said to Ihuna Mazda, what are them who will not accept the Arzmanian law? Ihuna Mazda answered him saying, behold, thy arms are full. Let the dead have dominion with the dead. Not only this generation, but many that come after thee will not be alive to the Arismanian law. Zarathustra appointed his people into the cities and villages and sit and families, but over the whole of them he appointed Yesuak as chief, one of his companions who came with him from Aus. And when Yusak was established, Zarathustra and his companions traveled further and came to the city of Nikro. Nikrio Rio, Rio, kingdom of Abotha, king of 12 generations through his forefathers, whose title was Abotha, son of Uza, son of Nimrod, son of the house of Tizang, who was descended from before the world was. Nikiro was a walled city, but the Zarathustrians gained entrance without paying tribute because the law thus favored strangers. Abotha, in his youth, had traveled amongst the Parisians and knew the language, and the, and when Zarathustra was before him, speaking the Ozian tongue, the king inquired his business and how long he proposed staying, stating, moreover, that he had received the tablets of the Arismanian law, with the interpretations from the king of the sun, Asha, and that he desired to see Zarathustra. Zarathustra said, I came to establish the Arismanian law in the name of the All Light, Will I blunt the edge of the sword and the sphere? Until I have fulfilled the commandments upon me, I shall tarry within the city. Of things thou hast read in the holy book, I come in the person of Ihuna Mazda. The king said, my city is not large. I have more scalps and skulls for the size of my city than any other king in the world. But know thou, O man, I am a philosopher. Many of my people who are also learned people Hear thou me, then, if thou hast a greater philosophy than I have, I will not only bequeath to thee the public skulls and scalps to be thy treasures forever, but I will also give my skull and scalp into thy hand as most valuable treasure in the Jayath Empire. Zarathustra said, thou, Though thou settest great value on skulls and scalps because they are the product of labor, yet they are of no value to me nor to the Father in heaven. Neither have I any philosophy for thee or for the Father's begotten, to accept his will to be servant unto him by doing good unto others, comprise the whole of the law by which all men may be made to rejoice in their creation. The king said, think not that, I, <clears throat> that I'm not as other men. I am not as other men. In the first beginning of all things, there were seven and nine things. I was one of them. By division, we created all there is in heaven and earth. Seven thousand and seven millions and nine thousand is nine millions of times have I divided myself. One seventh and one ninth of all there are created things is my very self. Tell me then, hast thou a greater philosophy as this? Zarathustra said, O oh, the folly of men before thee, O oh, Orisman. They run after that which flattereth self, seeing their fellows going down in death, and they raise not their hands to lift them up. I tell thee, O king, thy poorest slave that bringeth out of the earth food for two men, hath the greater philosophy than thine. He that can rule over his own self-conceit, that speaketh not of himself, giveth a better philosophy of himself than thou hast. He who has not yet risen from his mother's breast hath more treasures to give than thou hast obtained with all thy philosophy. 
Ere three days have passed by, the city skulls and scalps will be burned to dust. Nor will thy philosophy avail thee to stay the, the, stay the hand of Ihona Mazda. The king said, Prophet, is thou with this handful of men to battle with my army? Zarathustra said, I have spoken. There is no value in discoursing with any man who hath an opinion to establish, nor is man's opinion of value to raise up the souls of men. Bring thou therefore thy army and command them to fall upon me and mine. As the king said, thou hast no weapons. Think not that I battle with men who use their tongues like women. Zarathustra said, why boastest thou? Thy soldiers will turn and flee when thou bringest them against me. The king turned away and then ordered his officers to bring soldiers and dispatch Zarathustra and his companions and to hang their skulls and scalps on the walls. Zarathustra, Zarathustra and his companions went into the king's garden and formed in an altar. When the sun had set, the evening came, the king's soldiers were more than 10,000 came upon them. Ahuna Mazda had great power because of the faith of Zarathustra, and he spake with a loud voice, saying, Light of thy light, O Arzman, build me here a wall of fire. And behold, there fell from heaven curtains of fire, till a great wall stood betwixt the two peoples. Nor would one soldier throw a spear or sling a stone, and many of them broke and fled. When the king saw the power of Zarathustra, he feared for his kingdom, and not declining at once, what course to pursue, he went into his palace. Then came Zarathustra and his companions out of the garden, but the light extended above, up above Zarathustra's head like a pillar of fire. And Hunamaz to speak to some who were nearest, saying, Quickly run and call the soldiers back, saying to them, They shall be my soldiers, and I'll give them the weapons of thy creator. So the messengers ran and brought many of them back. Ahunamaza commanded them to gather their skulls and scalps from the city walls and from the gates and go and burn them. And the soldiers did these things. The next day after they were consumed, Ahunamaza began to preach, explaining the Arzmanian law, and he received many followers. The king had tried by all means to gather his soldiers together, but no one obeyed him. After that, Zarathustra went to him, saying, If thou art one-seventh and one-ninth of all things, who thinkest thou I am? The king said, They say thou art a very creator, but as to my opinion thou art only a magician, thou canst not do anything real, for which reason I hope thou wouldest come before me. Know then thy end hath come. With that the king struck at Zarathustra, but the king's sword was broken into pieces and of non effect. The king had two trained cheetahs, large as the largest lions, and he ordered them to be unloose and set upon Zarathustra. And it was done, but lo and behold, the cheetahs came and licked his hands, but the king was hardened and would not believe. Ahunamasa called the king to come near, and he came. He said unto the king, I am not thy enemy, but the enemy of evil. I come not to take thy kingdom. In a few days I shall leave this place, so thy kingdom would be worth, worthless to me. And yet I come to establish another kingdom, which is the Father's. I come to overthrow sin and wickedness and build up that which is good. And in so doing, it shall be known amongst men that the soul is immortal. Rather would I see thee and thy people alive and full of joy than to see them dead. Thou hast said, thou understandest the Orsmanian law, perceiving there is also a king's law. The king's law are for the earth world to punish the wicked and reward the, valeri the valerius. The Orsmanian law is for the Zarathustrians who need no more kings. Thy subjects are for war and plunder, but the subjects of the great spirit are for doing in good and in love and mercy. And have I not shown thee that the Orsmanian laws are the stronger of the two? Yeah, a hundredfold. It is the wiser for thee to espouse the stronger law. Thou hast gathered certain treasures, boasting of thy treasure's value. Because thou hast made a law of exchange for skulls and scalps, how sayest thou? Makest thou them valuable? Because a man bringeth a skull to thee, thou givest him bread. Now I declare unto thee, values consist not in the rate of exchange betwixt men, 
Shall a man gather a heap of stones and say, Behold, they are valuable, or iron or gold, or copper, and say, Behold, they are valuable. A piece of bread is valuable, or flax, or wool. Because the man hath set value on things not valuable, he buildeth in false and death. Or as man alone is valuable, the man who hath the most all light hath the greatest valuables. For by the light of the Father, all righteous things can be obtained easily. While as Sihuna Mazda was yet speaking, the spirit of Zarathustra went abroad, and with ten thousand other spirits brought fish and fruit, and let them fall upon a fall around about the place. The people ran and gathered them up for food. The king made no reply at first, for he was in compass about with the evil spirits who were angered with Ahuna Mazda in his proceedings. Presently, the king said, Because I am transcended by thee, it is no longer useful for me to live. With that, he cut his belly across and fell dead. And Zarathustra commanded that the king's body be laid straight for three days, and it was done, and there came thousands of people to look upon the king. And witnessed that he was dead, and they saw of a truth that the bowels were gushed out of the wound, and that there was no breath in him. So Ahunamazda suffered the spirit of the king to live for three days in torments, and then he called his disciples around him, saying, Now I raise the king to life, and I shall be testimony in Jayath. And Zarathustra pushed the bowels back into the belly and drew the place shut saying, In thy name, O Father, heal I this man's body as a testimony of thy wisdom and power. And when Zarathustra had drawn his hand over the belly twice, it was healed. And then Zarathustra said, O Father, as by the Spirit thou didst quicken into this life, thy child in his mother's room, restore thou him to life. And the king was healed and restored to life before the people. And he awoke and looked about, and then rose up. He said, Even now I was dead and in hell, and I saw millions of dead, and they were in hell also. And there went up around about them fires of burning brimstone, and none could escape. And that concludes the book of God's word. Next, we're going to continue on with the last page. Chapter 20. When the recreation was ended, yet Tanti called his council together, and he sat on the throne, and Fragapetti and Horb sat on his left hand on the throne also. The voice of Jehovah came to yet Tanti, saying, Behold, all my sons and daughters, this heaven and this land shall not be like any other place. For hither shall rise in time after they that shall begin the founding of my kingdom amongst mortals. For in the land of the east and the heavens of the east, I had given them lords and gods before whom they fall down and worship. But in this heaven and this land beneath it shall not be given any lord nor God, nor any person born of woman for their resurrection. To this end have I created this subjective heaven and her plateau, and they shall endure till the dawn of Cosmon and the overthrow of the war and mortal kingdoms. From this throne will I get, will I come in the day <clears throat> through my chiefs and reveal the histories of my kingdoms, and I will radiate outward around from this heaven until my kingdoms encircle the whole earth and until the earth's heavens are mine also. And whether thy ahuans be mortals or spirits, ye shall not here teach them to worship any one save the great spirit. For a question will rise amongst mortals in the beginning of Cosmon as to whether mortals are ruled by the heavens, by angels of heaven. Will I prove it before them that in this land all gods and lords and saviors shall be cast out, and mortals shall become worshippers of the great spirit? being ruled to that end by the inspiration that shall descend from this heaven through the spirits of the I human race. And they shall know that I, Jehovah, along, alone rule all over and within all my works. Be wise, my sons and daughters, as ye now find little aspiration amongst the hosts of wandering spirits. So will the same lack of aspiration be manifested in beginning of Cosmon. Amongst mortals, the voice ceased. Yatanti called Itzi, 
his assistant God, saying, Come thou and sit on the throne. I will go now for forty days with Fragapati, show him all my works, and I will also with him to Hapacha, God of Ice Ipsigi, after which I return hither. At seeing, came and sat on the throne, duly saluting, having been anointed and crowned previously. Then rose up Fragapetti to speak, preser preserving the great multitude, desiring him to hear him, he said. And what they have done, I am well pleased, O Jehovah. Through my through thy voice I selected them, and they deserve neither praise nor censure, being thy servants. Thou hast wisely chosen them for the dawn of perceive the foundation of that which will receive mortals in the third daha that cometh after. And because thou hast chosen this place, O Father, great to the responsibility of these, thy lords and thy Lord God, because they have supplicated thee, thou hast guided them and they cannot err because their work hath been slow. They have great honor in present patience and persistence may thou wisdom power love continue them for the glory now forever amen fragapetti ceased but the light became brilliant above his head and now voice came out of the light saying more shall they concern themselves in the righteous foundation of my kingdom than in the multitude of conversions of resurrections for the standard of their lords and gods and their successors is more of value than tens of thousands of redeemed who are of little wisdom and strength for the latter will be raised up afterward the voice ceased and fragapetti came down from the throne followed by yatanti and horb the ensuers chanted all hail great jehovah's power his light the immortal voice and when the gods advanced to sitis they halted standing abreast and then filed in front of the throne, saluting in the sign of Um, and were answered by Fragapetti. Lastly came the marshals of the traveling host, and when they had passed, the gods followed after, thus passing out of the capital to the place of the ships of fire, followed by the inhabitants of Yanti. Thus they entered the Avanza with music and cheering, and thus they departed first to survey the king of Yatanti, and then go to us up speak is maybe chapter 21 after fragapetti had examined the places of the asifs and of the physicians and such other places as belong to the lower heavens he descended to oh gee <coughs> sorry guys my allergies <coughs> are ridiculous as it's snowing today, the trees are blooming, and all the trees I'm allergic to, FYI. It's wonderful. Sorry. Hochidawa, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, the land of delusion, the happy hunting ground, in order to witness the games and tournaments, which were so far maintained by a great expenditure of labor on the part of the Ethereans, for teaching by subjective illustrations, Jehovah said. As mortal children can be taught by subjective illustrations, so have I created my S worlds capable of similar process of subjectivity. My rules are not man's rules, nor are my worlds illustrated by man's illustrative. Behold my rainbow, which is subjective illustration to mortals of a bow without the substance of a bow. But man bendeth a stick and saith, Behold a bow, and he holdeth in his hand, but mine he cannot touch. I gave to mortals to teach their sons and daughters many combinations by the use of ob objects. They should know a circle, a square, a triangle to learn to compute numbers by the use of objects inversely in the same way i created subjective means for the spirits of the dead that they might be taught and amused with my works to corporeans i give corporal eyes and corporal ears that they might obtain to wisdom on the earth but to a few i give suis that they may see and hear things spiritually 
to the spirits of mortals who die in infancy, I give spiritual eyes and spiritual ears, but without cultivation, they hear not corporal things, nor see corporal things, but to such spirits as have fulfilled on an earth life, I created them to see and hear after death the matters of both worlds. Nevertheless, there are many spirits in heaven who have not fulfilled either a spiritual or corporal life, and they can see but little and hear but little, for which reason I commanded that they should be called drujas, signifying spirits of darkness. And I sent my gods and my lords, saying to them, Go ye to the spirits of darkness, for they neither see nor hear heaven nor earth, and are wandering around indifferent even to their own nakedness. And ye shall have created mirrors and lenses and optical illusions and delusions, provided games and entertainment for them, so that their understanding may be opened up for the glory of my kingdoms. When the Avanza arrived to Hochdawa, it was lowered and made as an observatory in order to witness what was going on, and yet so provided that it could be moved about from place to place. And they witnessed the heavenly tournaments and games, the boating and fishing, hunting, and all other entertainment representative of what these angels had engaged in at mortal life. And yet these things were but subjective and not real. But it came to pass that many Drudras were restored to memory of earth life, restored to seeing and hearing, and in fact to know they had entered another world, illustrating to their dull senses that it was possible for them to learn to see things and hear things understandably. Nevertheless, they were within these regions, hundreds of millions of angels, so stupid as to be void of form and expression. Jehovah had said, when a man hath fainted, thou shalt arise him by calling his memory to things past. And when the Druji in heaven hath seen the whole, seen who he is and his place also, thou shalt show him symbols of things past and thus awake him. Jehovah had said, behold, O man, thou art the chiefest glory of my creations, neither created any animal that walketh on land or phileth in the air or swimmeth in the water or the crawleth on its belly with desire for spiritual life nor with capacity of cumulative spirituality but to thee only O man have i given power to aggregate this spiritual entity for my animals i bestow like a vessel that is full of water no more can be put into them and also when the vessel is destroyed the water runneth back to the ocean I quicken them into life by my own hand, but when I take away my hand lo, they are gone back into dissolution. As a drop of water hath no power before the sun, but evaporateth is seen no more, so is the spirit of all the animals I created before the light of my continence. But to thee, O man, I give power to everlasting life. Nevertheless, as a man may take a drop of water and put it in a vial, and keep it for a long time, so have I given to my exalted angels power to take the spirit of fish or of an animal, suddenly dead, and recloth it with the semblance of a body for a season, but yet it is only a subjective existence, and even as a man letteth a stone out of his hand, and it falleth to the ground, so when my angels let go their hands on my spiritual animals, their spirits fall into the sea of my body and are seen no more. Even so, also in less degree, created I the trees, the grass, the moss, and all vegetable things that grow on the face of the earth. And I gave to my exalted angels power to take the spirit out of the tree or a bush or a plant and to carry it away and recloth it with a corporal substance. But to my exalted gods, I gave power to do the same things not with one plant only, but with the whole forest and with animals and fishes and serpents. And when they do these things in atmosphere, they're called subjective heavens. Wherefore, it came to pass in the ancient days that when spirits of darkness returned to mortals, they told them that heaven was like unto earth, with everlasting life unto the all animals as well as to man. Turneth not away from such spirits, O man, but learn from them. 
that thou mayest not tarry along in my bound heavens when thou becomest a spirit also. For, it, for if thou setteth thy soul to feed on animals and to dwell with them, the gods cannot deliver thee to my emancipated heavens till thou hast served thy time in the lower heavens. One great light have I bestowed upon unto all men that they may progress forever. Though the waters of the ocean rise up and make clouds and the clouds fall down as rain and run to the rivers and thence back into the ocean a thousand times, ten thousands of times, yet the water hath not progressed. Neither have I given progress to a stone, nor to a tree, nor to an animal. But to man only have I given progress. Be wise, O man, and, and tie not thyself to things that progress not, nor set thy soul upon them, lest they become a bondage to thee in the next world. But for the droops I have created heavens midway betwixt light and darkness, subjective and objective, that they may be redeemed. Fragapetti also visited the Washa Wow Wow, I'm not lying about that, the great hunting fields and the place of tournaments, the Sea Cow Tosi, where thousands and tens of thousands of Drujas were being amused and instructed and awakened to their condition and to their possibilities. And when Fragapetti and his host has seen the beauty and grandeur of the lowest of heavens, and made a record of the affairs, Yatan, Yatanti said, Now have I shown thee, O Fragapetti, the foundation of a great house, even my kingdoms, which is Jehovah's. I am at thy service to go wherever so thou mayest desire. Then spake Fragapetti, saying, I desire to descend beneath even to the earth's surface and to survey the plains, the rivers, and lakes, in the regions where the Father's kingdom would be founded. Let my mathematicians compute the time and these things shall also be recorded in the Ethereum libraries for benefit of the angels of that day. The mathematicians computed the time and then Gyotisputu, <clears throat> the chief said, 8,900 years. So Fragapetti caused the Avanza to be lowered down to the earth's surface and to be course the land over east and west and north and south. And when he saw it was a fair count country as to land and water, he said, Behold, the wisdom of Jehovah is in the foundation and plans for inhabiting and subduing the earth. And yet 8,900 years. Oh, what innumerable millions of on the earth will go down in darkness er, that day. Here the light will fall. Here the beginning of the death of the Sifas. Yet the hand of Jehovah is over all. Interesting. Chapter 22. Fragapetti sent messengers to Hapacha, god of Eskoji, apprising him to the visit. So Hapacha hesitantly called in his lords and captains and fathers, preparing a time of recreation and also preparing suitable reception and entertainment. And Hapacha provided in this manner first 100,000 musicians formed in eight parts of a circle with eight intervening spaces. With each group, he provided 1,000 marshals, and they stood in front of the musicians with eight intervening spaces also. Next within, he provided places for the messengers, of whom there were 300,000. Then next came the Asaps, of whom they were 1 million. Next came the Ashars, of whom they were 2 million. Next came the nurses, physicians, next the teachers and factories and schools and colleges. And all of these there were 14,600,000. Of the grade first above the Asiwans, there were 20 million. Of the second grade, which was the highest, there were 30 million, but no Asians were present. In the midst of the circle was the throne of Hapacha, now extended as to accommodate his lords to the south of his throne, were the seats of the captains of the hosts, and a crescent were his counselors, of whom there were one million. Hapacha, having thus called them together, and having explained to but few of them the purpose now addressed them, saying, By the wisdom and power of Jehovah, I speak before you, that which I say is not of myself, more than of the faith I have in Jehovah, of which faith ye are likewise blessed. Since our youth up 
we have been advised by the guardian angels, their lords and gods, to be firm in faith in Jehovah above all things. For it was declared to us in the olden times that there were there was a highest heaven and a lower heaven. And now, through faith in the Father, we should all ultimately ascend and dwell in his holiest kingdoms. For which reason ye have been steadily workers since your mortal lives have been put away, even for this kingdom raising up many and causing them to rejoice in everlasting life. But as it has been promised ye beforehand that the gods above us would surely come and deliver all who are prepared for the next resurrection. Even so, to this day, cherish ye the hope for wider fields of labor, where ye may overtake your kindred and others whom have become wise in Jehovah's light. The time of resurrection is near at hand for many of you. Our Father hath brought this heaven into a lighter region that ye may be prepared for the still greater light beyond. And because of the new light that is us, ye have beholden that many of the Ihuans and Aseans have deserted our nurseries and have gone back to the earth, for they love the darkness of earth more than they love the light of heaven. My lords have sent messengers to me from various parts of the earth, saying to me, as much as they have deserted your places in heaven, even so much have the Asuans returned to mortals in great numbers, and have come to pass the great manifestations of spirit presence are now common to men and women and children on earth. Many of these Asuans, falling in with Drudras, have adopted their roving habits, denying that there is any higher heaven, honestly believing that they have an opportunity to reincarnate themselves and dwell again in mortal form, knowing no higher heaven than the earth and knowing no happiness save in the indulgence of lust. They appear to moral, mortals and marry in manifestation falsely pretending to be the kin of a living. Which sign forerunneth the approach of a new dawn of Dan near at hand, being the doubly armed in prophecy, your God called you to witness the words and proceedings of Fragapetti, who is on his way hither, accompanied by Yatanti, god of Yatanti, creator of Hapagochdawa. For more than 600 years, and many of us labored in the field, and our harvest for Gao had been the most esteemed of all the resurrections contributed the lords of earth. To comport with our dignity, have I have commanded the builders of opt, op bands to have in readiness representing these harvests and vessels for my lords and their attendants and my chief marshals to go part way and meet our visitors bearing the sign of the triangle and of the fruit of the altar. Apacha then gave instructions in full and presently the receiving host departed in the optavan with music rejoicing being cheered by the hosts remaining. In the meantime, Hapacha caused the house to be put in order. Chapter 23. Fragapetti had previously visited Hapacha, but told not who he was, save that he was god of Wundesi in Etheria. Consequently, Hapacha, now knowing that Fragapetti was coming, mistrust, not that it was the same person, but expected to see one coming in great pomp and glory. For he heard of the wonders Fragapetti had already accomplished in the eastern heavens, particularly the breaking up of the hells of Asu and the deliverance of the tortured inmates. Thus came Fragapetti to Ayupasi in his Avanzia, displaying neither lights nor curtains, coming with re receiving hosts with his vessel, anchoring near the throne of Papacha. Presently, Fragapetti came down out of the ship, Yatanti and Horb with him, also marshals who were on the left, the receiving host being on the right. Apaches and sewers struck up Jehovah's name, O ye lords and gods, and the hosts of the Avanza joined in singing, and with trumpets and harps and triangles, knowing the, symbol, the symbols of their kingdom, great with the glory of their music. When Fragapetti approached the throne, music ceased. Hapacha said, Who cometh here? And he made the ancient sign of Jehovah's name. 
Bragapeti said, A faith is in Jehovah, and he gave the counter sign. Whereupon Hapacha said, In his name, welcome, brother, and welcome thy hosts also. May his love and wisdom be manifested in me and my people during your sojourn with us. Bragapeti said, Jehovah is all wise, his fashioneth some men as sons, and out of their souls light extendeth into the far off spheres. Coursing these vast fields at certain times of seasons, he sent the swift messengers from his most exalted heavens, and these messengers passing through both light and darkness with their great wisdom, scan the distant kingdoms with mortals and angels dwell, and quickly catch from the guardian hosts and from the scenes around the brightest, best stars, and carry the record to their re reigning gods above. And when these gods descended to the regions and places of these gems, they go visit them. Even so, O Hapacha, standeth thy record in the higher heavens. And when the Father called me to visit and the red star in her heavens, I looked over Jehovah's messengers, reports, where was set thy name radiant with love and fire. So to these I made haste and came unknown because as yet unproved in these heavens, and thy much worth and the amity of those hosts when my love. I told thee thou shouldest hear from me soon, and thou hast. Behold, Fragapetti is before thee. Apacha said, Blessed, O Jehovah, come through, O Fragapetti, and honor my throne in the name of the Father. And come thou also, O Utanti, and thou, O Horb. And they went up and sat on the throne, and Fragapetti sat in the mist. Again, the ensuers sang and played, and during the singing in the light of upper kingdoms began to envelop the throne. They spake Fragapetti, explaining, Hear me, O all ye people, and ye attentive to my words. Because ye have been faithful from the first, ye are become the light of the earth and of these heavens, inasmuch as ye have maintained your altar in times of sacrifice, worship. There have been maintained in the upper heavens altars and sacrifi sacrifices in conjunction with you, whereby ye have been blessed in hearing the voice and all the darkness through which the earth and her heavens have passed, as the Father hath given voice betwixt mother and child, though they have been distant from each other, so in like manner, to Jehovah's kingdoms, which are in the sym sympathy in righteousness and love. As ye behold the light gathering about this throne, think not that I bring the light, nor that it is sent to me in person. There is a cord betwixt me and my Ethereum kingdom, and I am one end thereof. The other end is a throne in Etheria. When I sit in the midst of this throne, behold, it is illuminated by the higher heavens. Think not that my heavens are the highest of all, for such that all highest can never be obtained. Nevertheless, my heavens are connected as with a cord to them above me, and they to others still above. And so forever, upward and upward, the all highest conceived of its cold Jehovah, and no matter how long it descendeth, still the voice is his voice. That ye may hear Jehovah's voice, I will now set my son above the throne. Bragapetti ceased, and a light most brilliant in the figure of the sun settled above his head back to the throne. Many could not look upon it because of its brightness. Presently Jehovah spake out of the light, saying, Rejoice, O Hapacha, in the name of thy creator. Sing thy songs of delight, and thy people hold up their heads. Behold, I have watched over thee and thy hosts in my promise. Have ye fulfilled the dawn of my light? Three thousand years are as one day in sight. Yesterday I said, sit ye here, stand he there, for tomorrow I come again. And this was my commandment for the thousand and ten thousands of years. But others remembered me not in the night, and they went down as a child that falleth asleep. And when I came on the morrow, behold, they had not awakened. But I roused them up and showed them my great light. Again, I said to them, three thousand years are one day in my sight. Sit ye here, stand ye there. 
and remember me. Tomorrow I come again. But lo, they went down in sleep. They remembered me not, thy creator. But thou, O Hapacha, has maintained the watch all night long. Thou art the first of the gods who hath kept this kingdom whole from dawn to dawn. Thou art the first of the gods who kept my kingdom safe in the lower heavens till the morrow came. Now have I come to thee to deliver thee and thy kingdom to Harati, whether thou shalt tarry till the close of dawn, when my sons and daughters shall bear thee toward my emancipated worlds, and thy host shall go with thee. The voice ceased, then spake Fragapetti, saying, For three days will I tarry here, two days shalt thou have a recreation, but on the third day thou shalt appoint thy successor, and I will then again speak before thee and thy people. Apache then proclaimed two days of recreation, and the hosts mingled freely together, those of the Avanza coming out and rejoicing with the Abseguians, and great was the glory of those two days. Chapter 24. Horb rejoiced not, and he alone, of all the people, assembled with burn, burden in his soul. He said, Jehovah, thou hast rebuked me, and I am cast down. Thou hast shown thy son Hapacha, one of thy gods, in the lower of the heavens. And Hapacha, thy son, hath maintained his kingdom unto thee, till this dawn of light hath come. Yet thou gavest into my keeping a kingdom far higher than this. Even Zedho, and I went down as a child that falleth asleep. My kingdom forgot thee. My people cease to sing songs unto thy name. We buried ourselves in darkness, and thou hast chosen me to be the next succeeding God of the earth and her heavens. How shall I fulfill thy commandments? How shall I know the way to choose gods and lords unto me who had been steadfast and zealous? As he thus commanded with Jehovah, communed with Jehovah, Fragopetti said unto him, Thou faith are all things accomplished. Without faith, all things are uncertain. He who saith, I know Jehovah lieth and reigned, hath said wisely. But he who saith, I go forth in thee, O Jehovah, for I know thou wilt accomplish, hath said much more. For his words maintain the power of the Father in him. When the morning of the third day had come, Apache called the host from recreation to labor, and the ensuers chanted a hymn of rejoicing, and after that, Apache said, To thee, O Jehovah, are all things committed, even as from thee thy came forth. Thy voice is ever upon all men, but they hear, they hear not thee. Thine eye is observant of all men, but they believe is not. It, to teach men these simple things is to make gods of them to open up their understanding, to find thee, to know thee, and to realize thy ever-presence, to become one with thee. This is the labor with thy gods and thy lords and thy holy angels. In thy name have I rise up one who has succeeded me in this, thy kingdom. From thy light shine, from thy light shall thy Orion chief wave a crown for him. With my own hands will I crown him unto thee in thy kingdom. The marshals now brought forward Pinto, Pinto of Carassus, highly learned in discipline, and he stood before the throne of God. Thereupon Fragopetti rose up, saying, Without a keynote, a number of instruments cannot be attuned to harmony. Without a faith in all highest person, neither angels nor mortals can live in harmony. Individuals may be strong, but many in concerted action comprise the Father's kingdoms. Neither angels nor mortals can assimilate of themselves, but all can assimilate with the Father, everyone perfecting himself differently. Such persons are as assimilated to one another. Whomever serve his own conception of all highest, making himself a servant thereto, is on the right road. And in the plan of the universe will drift into an association adapted to himself. <clears throat> Many such becoming a unit are powerful over the elements surrounding them. Disbelief is an all high, highest person is caused by weakness of spirit resulting from disease or from prenatal sin or by laudation of one's own self. 
Such persons cannot harmonize because each one is his own self-esteemed all highest. They are without power, without unison, and without sacrifice, accomplishing little good in heaven or earth. Think not the darkness belongeth only to the earth and the lowest heavens. These are those who rise to the second resurrection and then fall into unbelief and then fall in fall to the first resurrection and afterward become wandering spirits. And some of them even fall into hell, which is belief in evil and destruction, being good and yet others being drudras, engrossed in the affairs of mortals and in lust, teaching reincarnation, and they finally become fetals and vampires unto mortals. Whoever hath obtained to the height of his own idea is all the precipice of hell, but he who, finding the God of his forefathers too small for himself, and so inventeth one much higher, is a great benefactor. A fool can ridicule the ancient person. His delight is to pull down, <clears throat> but a wise man furnish a greater great person. To pull down the old person is to pull his own people. To try to make a non-appreciable person out of Jehovah is to make oneself the opposite of a creator. To learn to create, to invent, to cast one's spirit forth with power to congregate and make is to go on the right road. To learn to pull down, to scatter, to annul, to disintegrate, to set things apart from one another, to find evil instead of good to find folly instead of wisdom, to expose the ignorance of others instead of finding wisdom in them. Even all these follow after the first inception and disbelief in all of person. And since from disintegration of the compact betwixt the creator and his children, the accord of communication is cut off with the exalted kingdoms in Etheria. They have indeed double grounds for disbelief, for nor they comprehend how others can be believers in all person which less has faith in him. And the same rule applieth in communities and to kingdoms as to individuals in regard to the fall consequent in unbelief in all person. For a community becometh one person, a kingdom in Etheria become one person, a kingdom in the lower heavens becometh one person, a kingdom, kingdom on earth becometh one person, each and every kingdom being a single figurehead and as many of these kingdoms as are united become one person also being a single figurehead of many parts, which is perfection of each and every individual. Hence, as a single individual can cut himself off from the father, so can a community or a kingdom and so go down to destruction. The strongest, best man in the community, he has labored most to perfect the unit. That is the person of the community, the strongest man in the kingdom. He who laboreth most to perfect the person of the kingdom, the strongest man in heaven, is he who laboreth most to perfect all the persons of heaven. The weakest of men is the opposite of these. He laboreth to show there is no all person in anything. Verily, he is already falling away from the Father. Yeah, he accuseth himself, for he saith, I neither see nor hear all an all person, nor believeth I in one. It is a wise man who, finding he is going into disbelief too much, correcteth himself. He is not less wise who, finding the belief too much, and hence investigateth not at all, correcteth himself. It was said of old, first, testimony, second, belief, third, faith, and fourth, works. But I declare unto you that with the expense of knowledge, testimony must be strengthened. For in the olden times, angels and men could be commanded to believe, and they would believe. Herein many of the lords and the gods of the lower heavens erred, for they furnish not to those beneath them the necessary testimony comparing and comporting with the advanced knowledge in heaven or on earth, a God shall be swift in devising food for meditation for angels as well as mortals without an advice teacher or as well off with none at all. It was said of the old that a God taught the people on one of the stars to believe Jehovah lived in a straw and they rose in wisdom and harmony and unity. They afterward, another God came and taught them that there were no Jehovah because forsooth 
he could not live in a straw and the people fell in disbelief and in harmony and disunion, which then of these were the better God. Yet I declare unto you, they both necessary for without habitation and a figure, the great spirit cannot be taught to either angels or mortals in the first place. The labor of the gods is to lead the people upward step by step until they learn to be gods and goddesses themselves. On this earth, mortals were taught through stone and wooden idols and afterwards by engraved images. In some of the, in some of the mixed tribes, it will be necessary to teach them incarnated Jehovah in mortal form and by sympathy for his sufferings, teach them how to follow his spirit up to heaven. But all these subterfuges shall be set aside in the cosmic era. This heaven, more than any other heaven of the earth, will be regarded by the Ethereum kingdoms beneath you. Even on this part of the heaven will mortals first espouse the Father's kingdom. Of all things, let your labor be first of all, sow the seed of belief in all human person. The great spirit, as ye now sow and build Jehovah's kingdom in your heavens, so in the coming of the Cosmon era with the same teaching take root in the souls of mortals. Nor shall ye under the circumstances permit gods and lords of saviors to be established as worshipful beings, either in these heavens or in the parts of the earth. For this land is dedicated by Jehovah for the overthrow of all idols of God and Lord and Savior, and of everything that is worshipped, save Jehovah the Great Spirit. Neither shall any of these idols be established with the effect in these heavens or on this land, but be ye most circumspect to establish Jehovah the light of light, the all person in the souls of angels and mortals. Fragapeti ceased, but signaled for Hapacha to ordain Pinoto, god of his piggy. Hapacha rose up, saying, Pinoto, son of Jehovah, thou hast been chosen to be god of his piggy for six hundred years and even after if Jehovah so will thou hast passed the examination and standest above all others thou hast been favored with much traveling in heaven and for thy benefit many swift messengers from the emancipated worlds have explained to thee the dominions of the great chiefs he through the, whose fields this world is now tra traveling has stood up before thee he has spoken to thee and thy people Heed thou his words, and thou shalt be one with the kingdoms in wisdom and power. By proxy I have visited the Ethereum worlds, thou hast not. By being one with the chief, thou wilt endure to all light, and soon thou shalt visit his places by proxy also. And at the end of six hundred years thou shalt harvest, will be called for the Ethereum hosts. Be thou ready for them, and the earth thou depart, thou shalt rise up, one sufficient to take thy place, and thou shalt bestow him. Pinoto said, Thy will and Jehovah's be done. That which is given to me will I do with all my wisdom and strength, so help me, O Jehovah. Hapacha said, By virtue of thy wisdom, power, and love, O Jehovah, vested in me, do I this, thy son, ordain God of Ospigi. For the period of six hundred years, be thou with him, O Jehovah, and may him and his works glorify thee forever. Amen. Pinoto said, which I accept in covenant with thee, O Jehovah, for thy glory forever. Amen. The ensuers now sang, thou light and person approved and sung on high, Jehovah. Our God, Ahapacha, Jehovah, thou hast called him. Welcome, Pinto. Thou alone, Jehovah, remainest forever. Glory, glory be thee to, O thy creator. The light gathered brilliantly over Fragapetti's head. And when the music ceased, the voice of Jehovah spake out of the light, saying, In the first days I blew my breath upon the lands of the earth, and man became a living soul. Then in the second time I moved my hand upon the earth, and man went forth in power. Thus hath my voice approached the earth, be ye steadfast in my commandments. The time shall surely come, and in the third season, when my voice shall be heard my, by mortals. 
The voice ceased and Fragapetti took the light in his hands as one would take fine flax, and he turned it about thrice, and lo, a crown was woven, most brilliant, but a reddish hue. He said, crown of thy crown, O Jehovah, I have woven for thy son God of Aspigi. And he handed it to Hapacha, who said, in thy name, O Father, I crown him, second God of Aspigi, 600 years be thou with him, O Father. Amen. Chapter 25. It being now the end of the fourth day, Fragapetti commanded the hosts to embark in the Avanza, and the marshals conducted them in taking first the sons and the daughters of Aspigi, being 60 million, next the Zidhoans, 10 million, and then Fragapetti's attendants, mostly Ethereans, 5 million. When those were aboard, Fragapetti and Horb and Yamti, and Hapasha rose up and after making the sign of the setting sun, went down and sat in the foot of the throne. God that was, Pinoto, went down and took Fragapetti's hand, saying, Arise, O chief, the father calleth. Fragapetti rose and stood aside. Next, God rise, Yatanti, and he stood aside. And then he raised Horeb, and he stood aside. And now came the greatest trial of all. He took Hapasha's hand saying, Arise, O God, great Jehovah, call of thee, go thy way and his. But they both burst into tears and fell into each other's arms. Hapacha said, O Father, Pinoto said, his will will be done. And now the light gathered brilliantly over the scene. Ragapetti moved forward, then Yatanti, then Horb, and next Hapacha. Pinoto resumed the throne. The ensuers chanted, and the firelight of the higher heavens descended over all the place. Like a sweet dream, the scene closed. Fragapetti and his hosts were gone. Like a bee that is laden with honey, flying home a to, from a field of flowers to his home. So returned Fragapetti with the Alvanza laden to Harati, swiftly through the vault of heaven, a shooting star in Jehovah's hand. Athrava, god of Harati, an assistant to Fragapetti, knew that the Alvanza was coming and that Habacha and his hosts were aboard, and he determined to prove and provide glorious reception. So for the space of a thousand miles, he caused pillars of fire to be erected in two rows so that the Alvanza should pass between them and near the pillars. He stationed trumpeters and harpers and one million divided into 100 groups. And they were so arranged that when the Alvanza passed them, they could come aboard. Now, during the absence of Fragapetti, many of the spirits who had been rescued from torture and madness in the hells of Asu had been restored to consciousness, more than 150 millions of them. Of these, Athrava said, clothe ye them in most gaudy apparel, and let them be the bearers of perfumes and flowers and torches as presents for the Ahin hosts of Abacha. And the light shall be lowered as the place of landing to make it acceptable for those newly raised who are aboard. Athrava said, as for Maru, within the walls of light, it shall be rated seven. But when Fragapetti hath ascended the throne, it shall be raised to nine. And in those days, nine in Harati was 50% of the capacity of endurance in the plateau. Jehovah had said, if they raise the light, it will be more acceptable to my Ethereum hosts, for they dwelt along near the earth and thirsting for the Ethereum light. But yet consider ye, here are thousands of millions of atmospherians who cannot endure the Ethereum light, but delight in a lower per percent. See to it that the walls of the light protect my hosts in the dark of one side but rise in the grade to the nine within. Atharaba said, there shall be flights upstairs leading over the walls of Maru, and they shall be white and illumined by the day, which will be sufficient for dividing the people according to the light suited to them. Thy hands with Apacha will go over the walls for the in entered their corporal cities in the same way besides they are capable of enduring the light for the Ihuans with Hapacha will desire to remain without. For them prepare ye a place for delight and rest. But in regard to the Ethereans, Atharava gave no orders, for they were capable of perceiving all necessary things without instruction. And that ends chapter 25, and I'm going to end it there.
I hope you all enjoyed. And for my commentary, those are just my opinions, perceptions, and perspectives. You don't need to uh, resonate with anything that I say. I just wanted to bring out some interesting little toodles of information that I think people should know that do listen to me and understand that I read objectively and subjectively. Um, I don't want to upset anybody, but I'm just going to point out things that I see and you don't need to be okay with it. It's okay. We're all entitled to our opinions and perspectives. So I hope you respect mine. Um, very interesting read. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like to support my work, all the links are, will be down below. Um, I'm in a lull right now waiting on birth certificates to be mailed to me. So I cannot get my driver's license just as yet. And therefore cannot get into the system here to getting a job without being taxed in another state. Fun times. So as I am waiting on that, I need to start working. So here I am working. So any support is great, but free to everybody. Of course, knowledge should be free. So I wanna thank everybody and I'll see you on the next one.